Hi there everyone, this is Jim. Uh, so, in my game programming class, intro to game programming class, we have a final, and that was to make a level using whichever software you want. I asked the professor to make a level in Little Big Planet, and he said it was alright. So, this is my final project, slash final for that class. Um, so, I decided to make a level based off the <laughs> the 90s Nickelodeon game show Legends of the Hidden Temple and this is you know what I got here so what we got is uh, we got our little main character here Sackboy um, before I start in case you haven't played this before uh, Sackboy is the main character Little Big Planet is just a kinda you make your own thing you put it out on the internet for other people to play that's pretty much what Little Big Planet is. It's just a, it's, it's just software really to make your own thing. Um, so what we can do is we can jump. Uh, we can press the R1 button to grab, uh, and that's pretty much what we're using in this. We're moving left and right with the analog stick, and we can emote. Oh, that pause. We can emote when we actually play the level into, you know, do different emotions and whatever. And if you, I move the controller up and down, I can move his face up and down. But the only buttons in this level that we're using are X, which is jump, and R1. And I made the instructions for this level based on that knowledge because if you're playing this level, you already know how to play Little Big Planet and you have already went through the campaign essentially or have played Little Big Planet before because um, nobody really just picks up a level on ran a random level online and just you know goes to doesn't just you know just doesn't know how to play so right now we're in creative mode and I just wanted to uh, go through the entire level and show what I did to make it essentially so this is the start point you load up here and then we got this arrow here so you know you know we're going from right to left instead of traditional left to right so uh, we got that, we got up here is where you're going to be finishing your temple run. So you're going to cross the finish line here, and here is the scoreboard to end level. And I put this here so nobody can cheat with the, the race starting over here, and then immediately, you know, just running over here and ending the race. So this can only be triggered by grabbing the pendant of life that's at the end of the temple. So this is just another checkpoint in case you somehow happen to randomly die in the temple. Uh, that's why this is here. Um, so we got a little mouth here that makes our Olmec head talk. Uh, so when you walk into his range, the dialog box triggers and then it opens up and displays what you're going to be doing. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't create this Olmec head. I got it from somewhere else. Um, I got it from another level, or another creator who made a Legends of the Hidden Temple level, and I kind of borrowed some of his ideas to incorporate into mine. Not exactly the same, but I did borrow this head, this asset, from somebody else. And I don't exactly know his the name of the guy who made it. So, what we got here is the race start platform. Three seconds standing on the platform, and then you're off, and you got three minutes to complete it. So we got the cave of size here. Just run up here, press the button that's right here, and then it'll trigger this door to be destroyed, and then you're into the pit. Or, if you go up the stairs, you got the th room of the three gargoyles, you grab this guy, and then you're in, into the next uh, area. So this is the pit of despair. Um, ball pit, there's a swing here. You can go up or down on the next side. Uh, there are buttons on the doors to trigger the doors, just, you know, destroying the door, and then you can move on to the next area. Um, this is just the heart room in the show. It's just a room. There's nothing really going on in this one. It's just there to look kind of creepy. And then when you get, when you're ready to move on, you press this button and move into the King's storeroom. And then about down here, we got the throne of the pretender, as it's called. Sit on the throne. It'll trigger this, uh, this door to be open and this door to be open. And then you move into here in the next room. So we got here, this is the swamp, it's just a pit of balls to make the trek more uh, precarious, not really precarious, just more annoying to the player. There isn't really any danger to them, just they, they're just there to make it inconvenient for the player, that's it. 
uh, and then up here is the king's storeroom. So this is a little bit more complex. So what we got here is a jetpack. And when you walk over the jetpack, you get a jetpack. You can start flying around with the left analog stick. Uh, so what you can do is you can grab one of these pots and you can break them open to uh, get the key and then put the key into the correct pedestal to move on to the next area. So what I have here is the first pot contains the key. So when you break it, this emitter right here is going to pop out the key and the key has a tag on it and when you when the key pops out and you have that tag and you put the tag into the correct pedestal which is the second one here the door over here opens and lets you move on you can still smash the other two pots or the other the third pot even if you already grab this one and then destroy this one and pop the key in already and this door doesn't open from above so you can't go below there's a button here so it can let you climb up into this area but you can't if you run from the top you can't go below um, and then the next area we have the shrine of the silver monkey or in this case the spongy sack person um, so just grab this piece put it here this piece on top this piece there um, so a normal person would do it legs then chat then the arms then the head but if you can somehow jam the head down here first then grab this then grab this and put it all into this area the uh the sensor down here only needs to see uh so see that blue cone there that's what the sensor that's where the tags on the uh sponge the sack person statue thing that's where they need to be in order to trigger the door to move on to the next area and that's it uh so when i do the run oops um let me just place that back down okay so when i do the run and show you you know how it's done that's that's what happens that's what, how i set this up it's probably not the best way to set it up but it's that's one way i figured out how to set this up so you just grab the legs grab the arms put the head on top and then boom you're on to the next area and then this is just the like just a holder area so if you run down here oh uh let me go to this area first before i do that so this is the dark forest there are two trees here they have arms they're kind of scary uh you grab this thing here this little branch here it triggers this door to be opened if you grab this one it does nothing and then you get to move on uh so then here is just the elevator to move up into this room so you can grab the pendant of life and when you grab the pendant of life all the doors even the ones that you didn't destroy are opened so that way you can just run back through the temple even run back through this way even if you came this way um and so that just lets you do that and then once you grab the pendant and run all the way back here uh, pass Olmec again. Once you grab that, this thing will be gone, and then you run up here, past the finish line, stand on the scoreboard, and celebrate your win. And that's pretty much it. And so now I am going to run through it for you. Um, yeah, let's see if those changes, whatever I did. Right, so here we go. Here's a sack person. Oh, uh, and if you uh, wanted to, you could customize the sack boy a little bit. Let's go with the adventurer skin. There you go. That's a little bit fitting for this level. So you can customize them too, but you have to play through the main campaign in order to do that. So here's the spawn point. Hey, Olmec saying what we have to do. Here we go. That's pretty much it. Let's go stand on the restart. And boom, we're off. Alright, so let's go up into the gargoyle's room. And then we're gonna grab this one. Oh no, that doesn't work. We're gonna grab this one. Hey, look, it triggered the door. And we're gonna swing across. Hit this. Trigger that. So let's go into the next room. Open. Got the jetpack. And this. There's the key. Uh, let's knock this thing off. 
that's like that, so that's destroyed. We're gonna lift this up, place it in here. Hey, it triggers it. Let's destroy that too. Move on, get back again. Legs. Grab the legs. Whoops. Okay, put them down. Grab the arms. Place them like so. The head. And, and, oop. Did I get it? There we go. We got it. Oh, it's falling off. Let's put that back. There we go. Uh, it might fall. Alright. Hey, look, it's a pendant. Let's grab it. And now all the doors are unlocked, even the ones below. We don't need that elevator. Here's the dark force again. Look, grab it. Nothing happens because all the doors are unlocked. And grab that too. And let's move across the swamp into the throne room. Back into the pit of despair. Climb up. Let's get into the cave of size. And boom, we're out. Go this way. Pass Olmec again. Jump up. Go up the stairs. And that was my final for this class. Okay. Hope you guys liked it.